What's the most dangerous tool in the workshop? This tool. Well, good day and welcome back to the A to Z of clarinet. My name is Philip and we have reached K and K stands for knives. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Reed knives are a really handy and versatile tool to keep around for adjusting your reeds. And today I'd like to address some of the questions or concerns you might have if you don't already have a reed knife or if you have a reed knife and you just don't get much use out of it. Now, before we get into it, a quick word on safety. Knives are inherently dangerous. They can cut you and they can hurt you. Your safety is your responsibility. And while I'm going to show you the safest way I know to do certain things, it is up to you to learn about knife safety and make sure that you're using your knife as safely as possible. So please be very careful around knives and remember the most important rule. If you never cut toward yourself, you'll never cut yourself. I'm actually going to go one further and say never ever move a blade toward any part of your body. Finally, the last thing on knife safety, keep your knife sharp. A blunt knife is far more dangerous than a sharp one. A blunt knife you have to force to get through the work, whereas a sharp knife should glide through effortlessly. If you find yourself forcing your knife, it is blunt, you need to sharpen it. Your knife, your safety, your decisions. So today I'd like to talk about what we use reed knives for, um, what do they do on reeds, and how are they different from sandpaper, which you might already be using. I'd like to talk about the different kinds, the different shapes uh, of reed knives that are available, and which one you might consider buying if you haven't got one already. And finally, a little word about sharpening and how I like to keep my knives sharp. So what do we do with our reed knife? Well, there are three main operations uh, that we can use a knife for in making our reeds play their best. First and foremost, most there is flattening the back of the reed, but then we get into things like uh, making little adjustments on the vamp to keep the reed nice and balanced and to keep our reeds consistent across our rotation. Now there's a video, um, it's about there, I think, maybe there, um, that tells you a little bit more about how to do that. And finally, we can use our reeds to make sort of significant changes to the shape of the reed to cultivate different aspects of our sound. Now that is an absolute can of worms, and that's a job for another day. <laughs> but in the first instance, probably the most useful thing we can do with a reed knife is to flatten the back of our reed. A lot of people use sandpaper for this, um, but I prefer to use a knife. In his excellent book, The Selection, Care and Adjustment of Single Reeds, Larry Guy calls this process dusting off. Now this is something that we do in the early stages of breaking in a reed. When we're breaking in a fresh reed, we get the reed wet, and then we dry it out. And we cycle through that a few times um, over the first couple of weeks of a reed's life. Now, the physical makeup of a reed is, is two main parts. There are the tubes that carry the water and the nutrients to the top of the plant. They're called the xylems. And then we have the other stuff, the sort of the spongy stuff that sits in between those xylems and holds them together. And that's called the phloem. Now, when we get the cane wet and then dry again, the xylems and phloem, um, they expand and contract at different rates. So when we dry it out, we're left with a you know, microscopically uneven surface. So what we can do to get a nice flat back on our reed is to take our knife and dust off that reed. And the way we do that is to hold our reed knife very gently and very lightly and scrape it or drag it really across the flat part of our reed. What you'll find is on the bevel of the knife, you'll find a very fine powder. What we've done is we've taken that bumpy surface and just smoothed it out ever so slightly. Now, when we repeat that several times over the first few days of a reed's life, we get a nice flat back on our reed. Then once our reed is going and we start wanting to make adjustments, having the accuracy of a blade can be really handy into getting into those tight spots to make sure our reeds are all uniform. Sandpaper is great because it's really cheap and as long as you have it on a flat surface, it will do pretty much what you tell it to. You can get it in numerous grits from very coarse to very fine. But you do get a different kind of surface when you've cut with a knife versus when you've cut with sandpaper. Now, if you look at these two pieces of wood, which is West Australian jarra or Eucalyptus marginata, you'll notice that the one on the right is very glossy, very shiny. That's a super flat surface. That was done with a blade or with a hand plane. Now, the one on the left was done with very fine sandpaper. Now they're both smooth, but the surface that was cut with the blade is much glossier, much shinier. 
The one cut with sandpaper, even though it was incredibly fine sandpaper, it still leaves a, a somewhat rough surface. Now, is that going to make a difference on your reeds? Probably not, but it is worth thinking about. Now, the thing that a knife can do that sandpaper can't is to get very, very small details smoothed out onto the reed. Let me explain. Now, if I have a bump on this piece of wood, which is obviously a lot bigger than a reed, um, if I was to attack this with a blade, I can attack just that bump. If I use sandpaper, I don't only get that bump, but I'm also taking material away from the area around that bump. Again, on the scale of a reed, is this going to make much of a difference? Possibly not, but it could. So it all comes down to what you're most comfortable with. If you like sandpaper, use sandpaper. If you want to use a knife, use a knife. But there are very subtle differences. Now to the big question, what sort should you get? Well, there are a multitude of different reed knives out there. Not only do we have different brands, but there are also different styles of blade within those brands. For a clarinet player, probably the most common ones would be a straight ground knife, a bevel ground knife, and a hollow ground knife. So first we have straight ground. A straight ground knife is a rectangular piece of steel with a bevel on both sides of one edge of that steel. Now what this grind does is it keeps a lot of mass in the blade so it's fairly heavy and you can really get some work done with it. Now because the included angle of those two bevels is not particularly acute, um, you get a fairly durable edge and it's fairly easy to maintain. From there we get into some more specialized knives and this is where we have things like a bevel edge knife. A bevel edge knife is where one side of the knife is completely flat and the bevel is on the opposite side. Now, what this does is it means the knife is designed to be used in one direction only. Because when we sharpen our knife, we're left with a bit of a burr and we use the side of the bevel that has that burr on it to, um, to do some very detailed work. Again, like a straight ground knife, it's got a fair amount of mass in the blade, so it's a fairly solid knife to hold. Doesn't make it great for really fine work, but for things like scraping the back of a reed or making some deep cuts if you're making reeds from scratch, this is a really handy knife to have. Then we have hollow ground knives and double hollow ground knives. What on earth does that mean? Well, the word hollow refers to how the grind is established on the knife. To get a straight grind or a bevel grind, uh, the bevel is ground on a like a flat surface, so you get a uniform kind of flatness on that bevel. A hollow ground knife, in contrast, is ground using a wheel, so you actually get a concave surface on the edge of the knife. What that does is it removes a fair amount of mass from the blade so that you have a fairly light and agile knife. The concave grind also means that there is a very acute angle on the bevel. That means we can do some really detailed work. What that does mean though is that the edge that we get, because of that very fine angle, um, it's not as durable as a straight ground or a bevel ground. That just means you have to sharpen it more often. Then we have double hollow grounds, and that's where we have a concave surface on both sides of the blade. So we've removed a lot of mass from the blade, um, but we have a very, very, very steep angle on the bevel there. And that's for really detailed work. And you see a lot of oboe players and bassoon players using knives like this. Now these knives are made specifically for working on reeds, and they're very good at doing that. They're also very expensive. Now, I'm not going to tell you that these knives are a ripoff because I've seen a lot of the very expensive knives and they are of very high quality. The steel is very durable and the handles are comfortable. They're fantastic knives. Don't get me wrong. But do you need it? No, you don't. What you need is something that is sharp. And if it goes blunt, you know how to sharpen it. What I use is basically whatever knife I can reach. More often than not, I find myself going to this knife here, and this is actually a, a wood carving knife. It's not a reed knife at all. It has a fairly thin blade. A lot of reed knives are somewhere up around four or five millimeters thick, and this one is considerably thinner, but I like that lightness. I like that agility in the knife. The blade is also very short, but none of my reeds are much wider than this anyway. Now, even though this is a fairly high carbon steel knife, um, it's fairly soft, so I'm able to sharpen it very easily, which is handy because I sharpen my knives all the time. The thing that I like most about this knife is the fact that the blade is perfectly straight, and when I sharpen it, I can keep it very, very straight. Another thing you might like to use is a box cutter, or what I would call a Stanley trimmer. These blades are perfectly straight, they're perfectly flat, and they are razor sharp. The best part? 
If it starts to go blunt or it gets bent, you can just throw the blade away and put a new one in. So what knife should you get? Well, my advice is if you haven't already got a reed knife, it is start with any knife. Now remember, it has to be straight, okay? It has to have that flat section there if you want to work on reeds. But beyond that, it can be anything. It can be a pocket knife, it can be a carving knife, it could even be a box cutter. What is most important is that you learn how to use it and you learn how to keep it sharp. The thing to remember about using any knife you can find is that reed knives are designed to be very, very strong and have a lot of mass in the blade. Now, what that does is it gives you greater control over the strokes you make with that knife. Now, box cutters have a very, very thin blade. Now, you might not think that the force you put on a reed is enough to bend or flex that blade, but guarantee you, it is. A reed knife that is too thin will kind of skip and jump across the reed, and next thing you know, you've ruined your reed. Having that extra mass that reed knives have will help you keep control over the blade so it doesn't sort of slide around everywhere. And finally, there is sharpening. I'm not gonna tell you the right and wrong way to sharpen a knife because there are literally thousands of videos on YouTube about how to sharpen knives. And most of them from people much more knowledgeable than me. The thing about sharpening though is that you need a system that will allow you to keep the knife sharp all the time. Also, you need a system that's going to keep that flat edge or that straight edge nice and straight. It can be really tempting to get one of those gizmos that has the, the ceramic sticks or the, the knife sharpener machines. Can I urge you please to save your money? Using things like that can very easily take away more material from the middle of the blade and what you've done is you've lost that flatness. What I like to use is a combination of two sharpening methods. The first one is to sharpen using a stone and this is where I use a water stone which is perfectly flat and I run the knife back and forward and establish that sharp edge. From there, I like to use a leather strop. Now this is a piece of leather that's been charged with some kind of compound. Usually it's green, the stuff I had lying around was black. What it does is it polishes the edge of the bevel and you get a, an edge that is a lot more durable and it's just that bit more razor sharp. And you can make a leather strop out of pretty much anything, an old handbag, a jacket, um, even an old belt can make a great strop. But the great thing about a strop is that you can take it with you wherever you go and if you notice your knife not quite singing on the reed, just give it a couple of licks on the strop and you're good to go. So I hope that's given you some things to think about uh, when it comes to reed knives. If you don't already have one, they make a great addition to your toolkit. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the love I've been getting, all the comments and the questions and the likes and the shares. It's really fantastic. I'm having a great time. So I'll see you again soon for L. And until then, take care and I'll see you soon.